Let me ask you this. Is your business set up in such a way where you could weather an economic downturn? What, can you weather things not going completely according to plan? Let's say one of your accounts got pulled. Is your business set up to where you're not going to be just totally going you know, under if those things happen. Today, I want to talk about something different. I want to talk a little bit about independence of your business. Uh, some might call it sovereignty. It's a little bit of a different type of topic than normal. And I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Just a quick word here before we get started. This we're, this video ended up being longer than I usually put on this channel. Uh, it's turned into more of a, I would say, even a workshop than it is a typical YouTube video. But the subject matter, I believe, is super important. Uh, it, at the very least, it's going to get you to think about some aspects of the setup of your business that you might not have thought about that has to do with literally the security of the business, the data security, uh, and overall what self-reliance of the business. I think it's a really important topic. And so even though it's a little bit longer, I encourage you to go through it. The other thing is that some of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about here in this workshop, I have got a an audit checklist that I've prepared for you uh, that you could get for free. It's in the member vault here at the Blog Marketing Academy, but all you need is a free membership to get access to it. Um, and you could download this checklist and it will allow you to, to basically do an audit of your own business and your own blog and kind of see where you stand in terms of the overall self-reliance of that business, okay? And help you maybe develop some action points on some things that you can do to improve the situation. So with that, let's get started with the official workshop. David Rizzo here with blogmarketacademy.com. And if you are interested in making WordPress do what it is, what you want to do, and basically powering your entire business, and quite frankly, in a very sovereign way, which is what we're talking about today, then head on over to blogmarketingacademy.com and get subscribed, get your free membership there. And also here on YouTube, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you can stay in tune with what we're doing. Today, I want to talk about something different. Um, and it, so if, if you are paying much attention to the world today, you see that things are kind of uh, changing and something I think it might get a little worse before it gets better but we're at a peak a time of peak centralization right now where uh, a lot of uh, power has centralized in big massive governments and also when it comes to technology and big big companies like Google Facebook and those types of things even when it comes to finance the banks control a lot of things um, and when it comes to online payments we've got Stripe and PayPal and, and a few of the others that control a lot of flow and I think things are going to begin to decentralize over the next decade or two. I think it's an inevitable trend. Now, while we're doing that, some things might get a little weird, a little awkward. And it brings us to the point of, you know, of preparing for times to be a little different than they are. Uh, you see this with people's personal lives, um, that more and more people out there are paying attention to food storage and these types of things. In fact, I go to Sam's Club once a week and they sell a bucket of freeze dried food there. You know, they wouldn't be doing that if there wasn't a massive demand for this type of stuff. On the flip side of that, you see people who are not prepared and a little caught with their pants down. Like here in Florida, if, if anything happens, like when COVID began, this definitely happened where everybody was going into Sam's Club and they were buying bottled water. They were buying toilet paper of all things. Um, and we, when we get a hurricane that's coming here to Florida, which is no, we're no stranger to that kind of thing. Inevitably, people freak out and they go and buy those things. And every time I'm thinking... Didn't you have any preparation to begin with? You live in Florida for crying out loud. So that same idea that people are applying to their personal lives, what about applying that to the very structure of your business, your online business? After all, if it truly is your online business, it's an income producer. It's a pretty important asset. And you want to have it set up in such a way where you're not completely and totally dependent on certain failure points that if they pulled the rug out on you, then you're screwed. And you want to set things up in such a way where that can't happen. Now, when it comes to failure points and preparation, obviously things are a little different when we're talking about an online business, okay? We're not talking about food here. Uh, so let's go over some of the common ways that I see people, they, that they put themselves in a de dependent status with regard to their business and their blog. 
One is a reliance on building communities on the third party, usually social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, things like that, where they put so much emphasis on building those follower accounts and those subscriber numbers that they really don't spend any time on building anything they actually own. And so these are the people that can get totally caught with their pants down if an algorithm just catches them and their account gets turned off. That, that you've, you've, I've seen so many of these horror stories out there. Sometimes they just get caught in the net by accident, but it doesn't make you less dependent. You know, it's, you never really need to not rely on those platforms to build your entire community. Another one is building your business through an all-in-one hosted service. And we're talking uh, like ClickFunnels and Kajabi or even uh, online course platforms like Teachable, where they basically host everything. They do all the order processing for you and all of those things. Now, nothing here I, I want to say are th that these things are bad. They're not. They actually provide a really good service. The thing is, it makes you completely reliant on them okay and not only that reliant on paying that bill if they just decided to up their pricing on you well good chance they're honorable companies and they would honor their locked-in pricing but what if you were using one that didn't you know like these things need to be thought about in advance Another one is building up ways of distributing content on like YouTube and some of the things that we just mentioned but you have not built any media that you own. And the primary thing here is your email list. If you're not building your email list when you're putting all that effort into YouTube or your Facebook page or, or some Facebook group, you're totally got the wrong priorities. It literally, like, okay, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter how big your Facebook group is, but that is small potatoes in the scheme of your the longevity of your business versus building your email list. It just is that way. Another one is using third-party email list providers, which most of us do. You know, I'm using Drip right now, um, although I'm in the process of converting. Um, but, you know, AWeber, ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, they're all hosted. They're all third-party companies. Now, if you're using one of those and you do not have a backup plan, if you're completely reliant on them to, to back up all that stuff, that, that's a point of failure, okay? Most of us, even though most of these companies, they provide a way to CSV export your list, most people don't do it, okay? Another thing that can introduce a point of failure is running major segments of your business through some company that is known to do account shutdowns, okay? And I'm looking at primarily Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. If you have if you've got your situation your business set up in such a way where those things are like major pillars of your business, well those companies are known to be weird when it comes to online censorship and stuff like that. Even if you think that you're small potatoes and that would never happen to you due to the nature of what you discuss, you don't know. It seems to be a moving target, okay? And not only that, sometimes the algorithm just does it. And these are massive companies. Who do you pick up the phone and call, okay? Another point of failure is running all of your sales through some third-party platform that you don't control, okay? Now, I'm not saying that it's bad. I mean, after all, I've said really good things about Thrivecart. However, if you have everything in-house, then you own even the order history. It's not something you could probably export from a third-party cart very easily. And if you could, you probably are not doing it. So once again, that's another point of reliance. Another thing, and this is important for us as bloggers, is are you at a point where your traffic, the way that you get traffic is basically reliant on pay traffic? If you're trying to have your funnels convert, do you have to keep the fires on with your Google ads and your Facebook ads and that if you turn them off or if something happened to your ad account, you would literally make no sales? That's not a good place to be, all right? And then lastly, this one's a little bit different, and that is, your business finances. Do you have the finances, the accounting of your business such that you spend most of what you make, that you're really reliant on the next promotion, otherwise you might have a hard time paying your bills? Or do you have a nest egg or a rainy day fund there for your business so that if your sales go through a lull, you're totally not screwed? So these are all really important points. And the idea is just to ask the question, what if? And when it comes to preparation, it comes down to a point of setting up your business to where you, you are not 
you're, they can't like make or break your business based on one of these things changing, okay? Because these things could happen. Hopefully they won't. And in some cases, they're not that likely, but it doesn't mean you don't prepare for it. And then the more prepared that you are, the less likely it will ever come up to bite you in the butt. So that's what we're going to talk about moving on here. So what I want to do is I want to discuss six major things that you can pay attention to and do a little audit for on your own blog and online business to see where you stand and ultimately some things you may want to adjust. Now, uh, these six things we're going to cover here in just a bit, but if you go to the blog post, the written part of the post, there's a lot of extra data there. You might be on it right now. If you're on YouTube, hit the link below this video, pop on over to the blog. I have prepared a, a checklist for you that's just kind of like a, uh, I haven't thought of the name yet, but it's like a, like a business sovereignty, a self-reliance checklist for your online business. It's going to be available to you for free inside the member vault and a free membership will get you access to it. But this thing is going to go into more detail and it's going to allow you to go and actually look at how your business is set up and some things that you might want to do to uh, to kind of get a backup plan in place on it, okay? So that audit checklist is available in the free member vault. Just head on over to blogmarketingacademy.com, get a free membership, and you can pop on into the vault and grab it. With that, let's go ahead and get started on these six different points. Number one is to build your own platform that has all the major operations of the business all in-house. Now this one, it's a matter of you and your personal taste, how, how far you want to take it. I admit fully I'm bringing my opinion into this one, but hear me out. Basically, if you want to go and use a, a hosted platform like Kajabi or ClickFunnels or Teachable for online courses or any of these things, it's okay as long as you do it with your eyes open that all the data and the history and whatever you've got set up is on their platform, okay? And if they change something, if they decided they didn't want to deal with businesses like yours for some reason, if they wanted to raise their rates, um, you're kind of reliant on that, okay? It's basically like web hosting, except it's a lot harder to get out of it, okay? So I am personally a massive fan of building things in-house on top of WordPress. I think the WordPress platform and the plugins and everything that you have available to you, you can build an extremely powerful, fully featured online business platform on top of WordPress. It's not that difficult. There's a little bit more responsibility that goes along with it, but really the, the solutions have matured greatly. And now you can have everything in-house, Okay, it's all data that's attached to your website. And get this, when you actually have all the data inside of WordPress, that means that when you back it up, which we'll be talking about in a bit, you got all of it. You've backed up everything, your order history, your subscriber email list, if your list is in there, um, you know, uh, all of your members, your community, your blog posts, your comments, it's all backed up as one unit, like literally everything that makes the business work is in one unit and can be backed up and put onto your hard drive and the whole thing. Contrast that to using having whole segments of your business, like your shopping cart is over there and your email list is over there. And the only thing you've got on your web host is WordPress itself. And basically you've got the core data and operations of your business all splintered off onto different things. And some people might look at that and say, well, that means you have multiple points of failure and that might be a little bit better because it's not likely they're all going to go down at once. And I agree with you. Okay. The thing is, if you've got a good backup strategy and you should, then actually Actually, having it all in-house makes it easier to actually back it all up and then makes the entire thing more portable and makes it easier to just port the thing wherever the heck you want to go versus if you've ever moved email list providers, especially a marketing automation platform, which I'm in the middle of right now. It's hard. There's a lot of things you just can't take with you. You can export the email list into a CSV and you can move it someplace else, but it is difficult to get all that stuff set up. You basically got to rebuild it. But if you have it in-house already, it doesn't matter if you change host or anything. It all goes with you, the full setup. And so I'm a massive fan of building it that way. It's one of the major reasons I am now in the process of moving the last major pillar of my business, which is the email list and the marketing automations. I'm moving it from Drip into WordPress powered by Fluent CRM. 
And that's one of the major reasons I'm doing it uh, is because I think it makes it more reliant. It, it's going to also have a really nice side effect of reducing my monthly bills, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the simplicity and the keeping the integrity of all the data backups together, including the automations and everything. So I think it's a really big deal. Number two is to make sure that you're building your community on media that you own. And what I mean by that is essentially not building, putting all this work into building up a YouTube channel or a Facebook group or something like that. And that's it. If that's all you've done, like kudos to you for building up that platform, but you don't own the darn thing. I don't care if you have a YouTube channel with a million subscribers, you don't own that. Okay, Google does, it's their platform. And they could take it away anytime they want. Are they likely to do it? Probably not, but we've all seen the horror stories of it happening, and it's not just in political circles, if that's what you're thinking. It happens in other times. In fact, sometimes it happens, and it's and they don't even know why. Like Sometimes they just get caught in an algorithm. The algorithm just says, Bip, turns, them, turns them off, and they're, they wake up in the morning, and they're like, where the hell did my YouTube channel just go? They didn't do anything that was crossing any lines, but it got turned off anyway. But then you feel like the small potato going looking up at Google going, who do I even call? You don't know because they don't give a crap about you. You're not paying them for it, right? So don't put yourself in that dreadful situation. You need to be building on a platform that you own. Now, does that mean that you're not using YouTube and you're not using Facebook? Of course not. We live in 2021 here. If you're watching this video later, maybe a little later, but these are really big platforms and you gotta be there. But it does mean that your focus, your main goal should be to pull people off of those platforms and get them to come to your platform. Okay, the main form of owned media that is yours and that you own a control and you set the rules for is your blog and your email list. And the email list is even more important, way more important, because that is your way of being able to reach out on your, your queue whenever you want and direct your audience's attention to what you want them to look at. And you can do that with email list. Okay, now you could do it with Facebook and YouTube and stuff too, maybe, but with the email, it's like, a push situation. You're pushing the content into their inbox and most likely their inbox is the mo is the first thing they check in the morning. So it's super, super important. Now, a word for membership site owners and people like me who have a community is that if you have a paid community and you're building up the community aspect of that on Facebook, why are you doing that? It's the same exact thing on Facebook. Facebook can swipe that thing from you at any point, okay? And there have been shutdowns on stuff like that. Um, and why do it, especially if it's an important asset that you want to have, like uh, one of the values of your membership might be the archives of your community. Why would you ever put that on Facebook? Uh, not only that, Facebook is incredibly distracting. You're in kind of bad company. If you've got an important group sitting over on Facebook, um, they could just start allowing, I don't know, sponsored posts to show up in your group and you can't do anything about it. You're going to have ads for other groups showing up in your community. Why the hell do that? So I am a big advocate of, once again, building those communities and those platforms in-house. Buddy Boss makes it really easy. It's what I'm using at blogmarketingacademy.com. And you can see the forums and they're all powered in-house, distraction-free. Um, and Buddy Boss does a lot more than that. Like it has groups and private messaging and all that. And I don't, I'm not even using that stuff at the Blog Market Academy right now, but I've got the capability if I wanted to turn that stuff on. So build those things in-house. Make sure that the assets that you're building that you own and nobody and nor, nor any algorithm can make it disappear. Number three is not making your business dependent on anything that has a monthly bill. Now, this one kind of goes really hand in hand with what I was saying in number one, and that is about not getting dependent on all-in-one type of services. Uh, but the big thing here is to not have aspects of your business that are dependent on something that has a recurring bill to it 
uh, and on top of that, you not having an, an exit strategy to it, okay? Because what happens there is that it makes it makes it so that you're not totally in charge of your own expenses. And how can you be self-reliant if you can't control your own expenses if somebody else decides to raise their price and you have no choice about whether to agree to it or not because of how difficult or impossible it is to remove that aspect of your business from their platform. You don't want to be in that situation. You want to be able to maintain control over your expenses. Now, coming over to WordPress, as you already know, I'm a big fan of building everything in-house on top of WordPress. And you may be thinking, well, a lot of plugins come with recurring bills. Okay, so here's how this thing, this works with WordPress. As you know, when you download and you install a plugin to your server, the code is on your server. It's on your host, which means that code will continue to run. Not only that, the, the, when it comes to software licensing, the world of WordPress is inherently open source. It uses what's called the GPL software license. And so by its very nature, the underlying software that you use is all free and open source. And so you may be wondering, what are you paying for? Well, technically, per the license, what you're actually paying for with these things is the updates and the support. Okay, that's what you're paying for. Technically speaking, by way of the license, most WordPress plugins are actually free. It's just that you're paying for the updates and the support, which I will be the first to tell you is pretty important, okay? But that being said, the main motto here is that if you were to stop paying for it, the plugin will still work, okay? So therefore, you're not a slave to it. If, you co if you're coming up for a renewal for some plugin, well, you especially if it's really important to the operation of your business, they absolutely deserve for you to keep paying them for it. You're getting the updates and they're there to support you. I'm a massive proponent of paying for it. You, okay. That being said, you're not obligated. If you were to cancel it, the software would keep working. You just wouldn't get the updates anymore, okay? So that's a pretty important thing when it comes to self-reliance of your business, okay, right? Now, there are some plugins out there that don't operate that way, and so you wanna research them and be uh, cognizant of that when it happens. And I'll give you an example. Member Mouse. Many of you have, who have been with me for a while know that I was using Member Mouse for a long time with my membership site. Parts of that plugin are open code. Other parts are encrypted and closed code. The other thing is that the way they've got their billing set up, um, if I stopped paying the recurring fee for Member Mouse, my billing would stop. And so they basically treated it as if it was a hosted software as a service even though I'm responsible for hosting all the code and all the data. It was one of the many things about Member Mouse that absolutely pissed me off and one of the reasons I got rid of it. So you need to be careful about the, the plugins that you're choosing. The good news is almost all of them are using the GPL license and so therefore it will work. And you can generally you'll be able to, to know if they are tapping into some hosted service and that you have to keep paying for that. And generally, I would say, avoid those, okay? Avoid those. I, I am, I'm a big proponent of paying for good quality plugins and themes for WordPress. I'm a massive proponent, and that's what I do. Even though some of them, I kind of know how to get for free, okay? But I still pay for them because they absolutely deserve it, and they do great work. Um, but if I were to stop paying them for some reason my software would still function. It would not turn off. And that's a really important distinction and one of the many reasons I'm a fan of building your own platform in-house on WordPress. Number four is backup, backup, backup. This is probably one of the more obvious ones. We sort of know it when it comes to our computers, but that is that we need to back up our stuff. Now, here's the thing. Most people, unfortunately, when it comes to their websites, they basically either never think about the idea of backups or they just sort of blindly trust that their web host is taking care of everything. And that's not what a self-reliant and sovereign online business owner does, okay? And so you need to put a little bit of thought into the data backup strategy of your site because what if the rug got pulled on everything or something got super, super corrupted you need to have a backup to turn to, okay? Even if the worst happened and your, and your actual web host decided to take a crap on you, 
you could take the backup, go to a whole nother web host, restore, and pick up right where you left off. This is the importance of backups. Now, when it comes to backups, if you've got a bunch of th third-party things out there, you're kind of reliant on them to do the backups. Um, some of them, like your email list hosts, you more than likely have a CSV export option where you can go and manually create a CSV file of your email list. And then you could download that CSV to your computer on a routine basis. And I recommend that you do it. And I, I have actually not yet seen a third party email list provider that uh, has an automation for those backups. They tend to require you to log in and just g manually generate the CSV file. And if that's the case, make sure that you do it. Like maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks at the minimum, go in there, download a CSV file of your email list, which is like the most important asset you've got and put it on your computer. And then maybe even back it up to an external hard drive too, just in case your hard drive crashes, okay? Now let's talk about your website. I've talked already about one of the major reasons why I like to have all the major pieces in-house. Um, and that's because when everything is in one spot, I can back up the whole platform and it grabs everything. Like literally I could take the the, the file of Blog, Mar Blog Marketing Academy. I literally have the entire Blog Marketing Academy on my computer. And that means that I could go to any web host that I want and I could restore that thing and I could put the Blog Marketing Academy over there. I'm on Cloudways. I love Cloudways as my web host. Uh, I'm on a virtual private, ser private server that's hosted in a data center uh, in the Eastern United States. I know where it is, but um, I don't wanna rely on Cloudways or that data center to do their backups, even though they are. Okay, I, it's not a real backup unless it's on the computer. Okay, and so what I use is, is one called Updraft Plus uh, as a WordPress plugin that actually does the backups. And there's other ones out there um, and Blog Vault, uh, others off the top of my head, but you should be using one. You should be utilizing something that will do automated backups of your entire site. And the more pieces that you tack on to WordPress, like shopping carts and email lists and all that, that means your backup is getting all of that too, which is really cool. Now, what you really want, one of my favorite features of Updraft Plus is the fact that it will run the backup, it will put it on my server, but of course, then it's still on my server. It's still a point of failure. In my case, I've got it set up to where it's actually sending everything to Dropbox. And what does Dropbox do versus, it, it is obviously cloud storage, but because I'm using Dropbox on my computer as well, it automatically downloads it to my Mac. And because I run it on multiple machines, it's also downloading it to those machines too. And so I have the backups of the Blog Marketing Academy not only on my server with whatever Cloudways itself is doing, it's uh, it's hosted in the cloud on Dropbox, which whatever they're doing, but I've also got it on multiple computers here uh, in the office, okay? That's a lot of points of backup, and it means that I'm grabbing everything and that if something were to really not cool happen, I could take the backup and I could restore it any place they want, even if it wasn't Cloudways. So you need to be definitely looking into your backup strategy and set something up and make sure the various pieces of your business are backed up in case you need them. Number five is about building financial reserves. Now, this is obviously different than what we were talking about. We're gonna take a little break from the tech and let's move over to finance, okay? Because our business, uh, is ultimately a financial vehicle for us. It's an income producer. Uh, and money is a form of energy. And one of the ways to be self-reliant and sovereign is to have excess energy stores in order to use them in times where you need them. It's even literally why the human body and, and, and life forms, we store fat. I got a little much of it myself. But the idea would be that um, if times were to get tough, you've got fat to burn there, okay? Um, and so it's the same exact thing with businesses. You should be building financial reserves. Are you taking um, some percentage of the revenue that your business generates and are you putting it aside into your reserves, into a rainy day fund? Now, here's the other thing that you might want to think about, especially these days, is are you... Should you put that money into um, something other than the bank? 
okay and i think you probably should consider doing so and that's what i have done as well um, because inflation is a pretty big deal right now and i think it's going to probably get worse too um and, and and a lot of people they don't understand inflation because they weren't taught economic stuff in school and they're like i don't even understand this stuff but basically your money your your currency your dollars are literally becoming less valuable all the time okay and you could see it by the fact that the prices of everything are going up okay um like real estate i'm on the market for a house right now and the real estate prices have just done i mean it's it's inflation okay they they are creating a lot of currency a lot of dollars out of nothing and the effect of that is inflation and so when you have funds that your business has generated that are just sitting in your bank account or in a paypal account it's just sitting there dwindling and so you want to have those reserves but you might want to do a little research into where you might want to put those funds to better safeguard their buying power for your business now i am this is not a financial blog i do not render financial advice at all i can only tell you what i have done i am a pretty big proponent of cryptocurrency things like bitcoin ethereum cardano there's a bunch of them out there um, and you may not know a lot about it and that's fine uh, you could do your own research on that but um, i took a uh, a segment a portion of my business reserves i think it was only a maybe four grand or so it was just a, it was a chunk of the reserves of the business and i decided many months ago to invest it into Ethereum. And I put it into a separate account so that I knew that those funds came from that source and I wasn't gonna confuse it with my business funds because I've got a heck of a lot more money in crypto uh, that I did through business, or sorry, personal investing than business funds. And you know, when you run a business, you need to keep the finances separated, right? So that's what I did. And so that $4,000 is now worth about $8,000. That's cool, right? The other thing is that I went ahead and put it on a platform called Nexo, which allows me to generate interest by holding it there. And it's not substantial, but it sure blows the crap out of a bank. I'm, right now, I'm earning about 4% interest um, on those funds that are in the form of Ethereum sitting there on Nexo, and they pay me like every day. Okay. Um, and last time I checked, I think the, the, the interest rate that if it was sitting in the bank, in dollars right now is like 0.05% or something like that. So 4% is way the hell better than 0.05%. And so that's what I have done. Now for personal stuff, I'm a much bigger fan of a company called Celsius. And um, and so I, that, I've got a bunch of funds with Celsius. I earn interest from them every single week. And once again, it blows the ever loving crap out of the bank. Okay. Now, of course, crypto is crypto. It can go up really fast. It can also drop like a rock. You got to do your own research on that. That's just what I have done personally. And so the motto here is not uh, that you should go put money into crypto. The, the, the motto here is simply put a little thought into it. Okay. Because first of all, have a rainy day fund. Okay, build some business reserves for your business. It doesn't matter if you're generating a small amount of revenue or a large amount of revenue. You should be putting some percentage of it aside for the unforeseen. Okay, and then the other thing is that put a little thought into, depending on what sum of money you have there, into doing something else with it other than just having it sit in the bank. Uh, as Ray Dalio said before, cash is trash. And in a world of inflation, it sort of is. It, it, it might take a real mindset shift to really grasp why that is, but cash is trash. I wouldn't recommend you keep it in the bank long term because it's just becoming less valuable every day. And you got to think about that stuff with regard to your business. You've done the hard work to generate that revenue now your job is to keep it and keep the buying power, not the number, the quantity of dollars, but the actual purchasing power that you've earned. The sixth point here is to build long-term owned traffic producing assets. Here's the thing. You could pay for traffic all day long. You could go to Google, you could go to Facebook, you could pay for it, you could send it right into your funnels. And as long as your funnel is producing more than your ad spend, you are basically a money printer, okay? And so that is very much true. However, 
We've all seen the stories, okay, of people, well, advertising getting more expensive, people randomly having their ad account shut down or th saying that your ad is breaking the rules and blah, blah, blah. And so you're not as, as self-reliant if you don't have income producing assets that are there working for you night and day, 24 seven, and you're not paying for it with money necessarily, you're paying for it with your sweat equity. Um, if you look at the regular world, when you buy an asset, you have the idea of return on investment, ROI. It's a matter of getting more back from that asset than it costs you to put it there. Now, each piece of content that you produce is an asset, okay? It's a, it's a long-term asset, and that asset has ROI to it. It's a matter of what that ROI is going to be. How much are you going to get back for the time and effort you put into that piece of content? Now, you're not going to get any ROI at all unless you do some work to make the ROI there. Things like putting the effort into actually optimizing it for for Google search and organic search results. I mean, it takes some time. How about going out there and uh, and spending some time building up some uh, backlinks to that piece of content? How about doing what's called what I call the Redwood strategy and going back and doing updates to it? Perhaps, you know, finding just other places that you can uh, put this thing and, and make it more valuable as an asset over time. That's the way you should be looking at your content. And the other thing is to be making content that can actually function as an asset. Is it actually optimized to be at the top of the funnel and actually get people to convert and put them on your email list, which as we've already covered, is owned media. That's what all of your content should be doing, whether it's on your blog, whether it's a tweet on Twitter, whether it's a Facebook post, whether it's a YouTube video, it should all be about building up your owned media and increasing the ROI of that piece of content. I, I was recently in Tennessee and I, and I had a dinner with Justin Brooke from Ad Skills and his wife. And um, he is, he, and it's kind of out now, but he has been totally re-engineering ad skills because as you might imagine, ad skills is really good at paid traffic. It's what they do. But he is in the process of going back to organic search and really working that back up again. Now, of course, he still use, uses um, paid because that's his bread and butter, right? but he's putting more effort into building up the content because he was too reliant on the paid stuff only. And that's the outset, the mindset that you should have. And I also realize that a lot of you guys are probably not running any paid traffic. Right now, I'm not either. And it's mainly because I just don't want to give any money to Google and Facebook if I can avoid it, okay? But the only thing that has been allowing me to not pay for any traffic right now anyway, is the fact that I have inertia with the content that I've produced. So I am getting traffic from YouTube and I'm getting it from uh, Google and things like that. Um, but I've also got an email list, okay? And I can promote my content to them when I want to. And if I wanna run a promotion, I've got them there. Um, I've got the member community. Those are all owned media. And so, that's the last point I want to make here is to, from a strategic standpoint, definitely be putting the time, the effort, and the systems in place for you to build up your long-term content strategy, to spend time working on ranking that stuff for search results, to tweaking it to make sure that you are, are optimizing it to put people onto your list. And in fact, if you want to follow along with me as I'm actually doing a full audit of the Blog Marketing Academy right self to raise my own rankings in search, to get my traffic numbers up and increase my conversion rates, I've got a course right now inside the, the, the Blog Marketing Academy. It's for pro members only, so you will have to become a pro member to access it. But you can literally watch everything that I'm working on. I'm walking you through it. You can pretty much watch over my shoulder while you see me go through the trials and tribulations of, of purposely getting my site to go up in the search rankings. Because what happened is that uh, Google started downranking me a little bit. I'm like, I'm like, okay, got to do something about that. And so now I'm recovering it. So if you want to watch what I do, become a pro member, you'll be able to access that course. Okay. Long-term ROI 
on your content and turning them into assets and not just another blog post where you hit the publish button and sort of forget about it. You need to think of it as an asset and really building up the return on investment of every piece of content that you produce. Okay, well, this has been one of the longer videos that I've done on this channel. It's uh, more like a workshop, I would say, than a video, a um, little bit of a different style, a little bit of a different topic. But I think it's super, super important um, given just the times that we live in. It's something that I just think is, it's like buying insurance. Sometimes you just have to think about those things, okay? And with the world of inflation being what it is, when it comes to the over-centralization of the internet and the way that it's functioning right now, where we're actually starting to see these centralized big corporations like Google and Facebook to start to become a little bit more activist and start to make judgment calls and things like that, we can't be in a position where we're totally reliant on that. Um, you, you need to have control over your own data and control over your own business. You don't want to be uh, subject to the whims of Google or Facebook or Twitter. You don't want to have all of your financial uh, channels for your business being in the hands of some other company. Um, you want to pay attention and, and not be reliant on your web host. I mean, I recently saw uh, a story of, uh, I, I forgot what company, it was, but GoDaddy just decided to randomly shut off somebody's website because they didn't fit their terms of service or something. I mean, it doesn't matter what the reason is. I, I will never support censorship of any kind on the internet. I think it's very, very wrong. Um, but that's a, a different subject than what we're talking about here. What I'm talking to you here, because we're talking about the strategy of online business. And then we also talk a lot here about the technology side of online business and building this stuff up. I think it's important to look at the overall security aspect of how we're setting this stuff up in terms of having those backups and not becoming over-reliant on outside services, okay? So hopefully this has been um, informative to you, maybe get you thinking about a few things, maybe have you check up on a few things that you've not looked into in a really super long time. Once again, um, I have created an audit checklist uh, that you can grab in the member vault, which will walk you through some of this stuff. It could, it's some stuff that you can just kind of go and kind of check into for yourself to see where things stand and do a little audit of where of kind of your the the self-reliance and independence of your online business and it's important regardless of what stage of business that you're in i mean obviously if you've got a little tiny blog and there's not much going on there and it could disappear tomorrow and you really wouldn't care that much all right whatever you do you but when you're building a business and you're building an income stream and and let's say you're even at a point where maybe your your family bills are reliant on that online business do you want the whole thing being in the hands of some other company or subject to the whims of companies that have been known to change their minds? I don't. Okay. So that's something that I think you should think about. Go through the audit checklist, see what comes up. If you need any help with the technical portions of the stuff, of course, you know that I am here through the technical services of the Blog Marketing Academy. And I hope that was helpful to you. I will see you next time.